Hello everybody and welcome to the 14th episode of the Stats Show. It's the first for quite a while, so hoping everyone's ready to get involved with the stats again and see if we can find out how we've kind of turned the start of the season around. The last time I spoke to you on the Stats Show was um, after the Fulham game, uh, where we'd unfortunately lost two out of two. Uh, but now we were unbeaten in the league, since, well, unbeaten in all competitions since then. We've got ourselves into safety of mid table as much as the tables can tell us at this stage of the season which in my opinion is practically zero but today i'm going to be focusing on our style of play and um, we've heard it a lot in the last three months we've heard nothing but Mowbray saying i want to change our style of play i want to um sh- enable us to be able to go on and, and dominate games and and that's the way i believe we can win leagues so if we actually look at the quotes that he produced the Lancashire Telegraph in the summer. This was in August, the start of August. Um, obviously, I don't need to read it out there, but he's, he was basically saying that we couldn't play the way that he would usually like to play in League One. It went a different route, went a bit more direct um, into Danny Graham, and that was successful. So we got promotion, and then um, we had to carry on with that style just because we had those, those similar sort of players last season. But if we move on now, look at what he went on to say. He feels it's time now with the quality of players that we've got and ones that we've brought in that we can move to a different brand of football, one that is more in keeping with the way that he likes to play his football. And those that is three key things he mentions here in this paragraph. Dominate the ball more, create more chances and have more control in the final third. So he says he's looking forward to it and the players are looking forward to it, but what we need to know is whether it's effective for Blackburn Rovers in 2019-20. I know it's a small sample size so far. We've only got five league games to go off, but we're going to compare how we've done in those five games on those three facets that he mentions there, dominating the ball, creating more chances and and being better in the final third and see if we are actually doing those things compared to our season last year. So last year, this was our uh, most selected 11. Uh, obviously, David Ray has gone now. Um, Smallwood and Evans as the axis in midfield Harrison Reed we had in on loan uh, he's in that right forward position which he did play on a number of occasions I know he played centrally as well um, so that was the team quite the numbers there are the average ratings from who scored that con for the season so relatively consistent between seven and, and, and six and a half there and let's have a look at the the changes to this season so we've lost Raya it was obviously gone to Brentford. We brought in Christian Walton. Elliot Bennett's now our first, seems to be our first choice right back. Derek Williams has moved into that central defensive role on a more permanent basis. So we brought in Greg Cunningham to replace him. Travis obviously broke into the team last season. Um, but I had two, three new signings there in the forward areas Bradley Johnson, Sam Gallagher, and Stuart Downing. All of whom have made very impressive starts, especially according to youscored.com, who, and those three, in fact, have the highest ratings of any of our players. Gallagher at 7.5, Downing 7.4, and Bradley Johnson 7.2. That's according to who scored. You can make your own minds up, Rovers fans, whether you agree with that or not. Um, but that's the team as it's looking at the moment. So, dominating the ball more, have we done that? So I, I took opposite. These stats are from Y Scout, and they apply to per 90 minutes. So our possession is actually up um, by about 2%. We have dominated the ball in four out of the five games that we've had. It was only Fulham away where we didn't really have possession of the ball as much as the op- opponents. And But interestingly, that hasn't really translated to our passes. So we were actually hitting fewer passes per game, about 20 fewer passes with the same amount of accuracy. So there is a little bit of difference in terms of the possession that we're keeping, but on on the back of that, fewer passes as well. But that only really scratches the surface, and that's not what we're all about here at the Stats Show. So we looked at the types of passes that we were um, getting, and again, the data is from Scout. So um, this is where it gets interesting. We've hit a lot fewer forward passes. Um, so far this season per per 90 minutes that's 14 fewer per 90 um, about the same amount backwards maybe a, a few fewer passes backwards but we've hit more sideways passes five, uh, six more uh, lateral passes per game fewer long passes but only by 
um, one and a half. So about the same for long and back, but fewer forward and more lateral. And I don't know whether that chimes to you as a fan, as watching us play, whether you think that we play a lot more sideways sort of passes than we than we did before. It certainly kind of rings a bell with me um, watching us play at the moment. Um, accuracy wise it's pretty similar across the board we are a little bit more accurate with our forward passes which is good to see um, and with our long passes which means possibly we're being more discerning with our long passes and making sure that there's a good reason for that long pass uh, before we hit it we're connecting with just over 53 percent of those whereas before it was less than half so that is an improvement and there's nothing wrong with a long pass um, the commu they're absolutely very effective but they have to be accurate and they've got to be for a reason so I decided to go a little bit further into depth and see where on the pitch things had changed um, so we've got a formation set up here in a 4-2-3-1 which is the formation that we've kind of stuck with um, despite changing a couple of things in pre-season and this is really where individual contributions to the system start to stand out so we've got a change in goalkeeper, Christian Walton. He's hit, hitting more passes than David Raya would, but his passing accuracy is, is far better, um, currently 13% better. These This data is actually from whoscored.com. They do uh, more individual data for this, uh, easier to access anyway. And I thought it would be better to get a different data provider as well, so to make sure we are preaching the right sort of message, we're not just relying on one data company. So this is from who scored. Um, we all know that David Wright, one of David Wright's weaknesses in his game was his distribution, and that's something that has improved under Walton. And I do think that Mowbray and the team have more faith in him with the ball at his feet, which is important if we're going to change the style of play. Um, all of the passing accuracies across the defenders have gone up, especially at right centre back, and that's Daryl Lennon, probably because he's not hitting as many long passes as he was moving into midfield um a greater accuracy from our right defensive midfielder which i think in this um case is um lewis travis and he was being compared to smallwood um in this comparison so um he's doing a better job than richard smallwood did in terms of the accuracy of his passes um not hitting as many but because the left-sided defensive midfielder bradley johnson's hitting a lot more so between them in midfield it's around about the same but with a greater accuracy um the big difference here, Ducky's stats aren't too dissimilar to what they were last season at the moment. Um, the left-sided midfielder, this is Downing in this comparison, and he that's where most of our key passes have come from. These two per match have come from um, Stuart Downing, and he's hitting a lot more passes with a greater degree of accuracy. So that's the big difference from this season to last season in terms of improvement. Um, our striker and our right side of midfielder, which has been a combination of um, Adam Armstrong and Gallagher and, and uh, Danny Graham, um, aren't hitting as many passes and aren't doing it as accurately. So that's where we need to improve things. I think, judging by these statistics, Downing and Johnson have certainly improved the pa and Walton, of course, have improved the passing stats. But it's interesting that not much really has changed that we can see in terms of dominating the ball. So just a little recap on what we've learned there about dominating the ball. Possession's gone up slightly. Um, the number of passes has actually gone down. Lateral passes gone up. Forward passes gone down. So not an overall glowing report so far in terms of dominating the ball from the last season to this season. What about creating more chances? So we went back to Wire Scout. We took the data for how we're doing further up the pitch. We've scored far fewer goals. Um, this is per 90 minutes. Um, our XG is way down. Our shots, interestingly, are around about the same. Um, only half a shot fewer um, so far this season as to last season and our shot accuracy is, is quite low down as well so if these some of these things would expect to come back up um the shot accuracy is usually around one in three across the board in football anyway so it is remarkably low at the moment but that's probably due to the the low quality of chances they're creating um to have an, an xg of 0 0.7 after the first five games isn't ideal so we're clearly not creating good goal scoring opportunities at the moment and that's translating to goals and xg i thought i'd take a look at how that has, has come about through the season so 
those of you that have watched the stat show before will know about these XG plots that Ben Mayhew at Experimental 361 uses. We've got one for each of the championship games. So just to refresh our memories for those people who didn't have, maybe haven't seen all the games, we started at home to Charlton and our XG was around about 0.9. These, these data values will be slightly different to Scouts because Ben's used different data to Scout, but you'll get the idea. The first half of the first game, we managed to create a few chances, but then it kind of tailed off um, in the second half and we didn't create a single chance past the 60th minute, which is when we should have been trying to dominate and win the game. Fulham, our overall XG was only 0.6, so you can see there's no real spikes in the in the worm there in terms of the higher the vertical line, the better the chance that we create. And there's only been one or two in the first half there that have really registered on the XG chart. Going on to our game, that our first win against Middlesbrough, that, that massive spike there halfway through the, the match is Danny Graham's penalty, and that was the only... Again, the only good chance that we had in the game. Uh, moving on to Hull. Um, we had two, maybe, decent chances there. Derek Williams's goal was the best chance that we created. So, thankfully, he put that away. Hull actually dominated that XG battle, although, having watched the game, they didn't actually dominate the game, but at least they did create a couple of chances. And then, Saturday's match, it was very, very low. Uh, XG in the first half. Neither team created much of a chance. We had one towards the end of the half there. And then we created quite a few chances towards the end of the match, probably when we were going a little bit more direct. So you can see from there that we really aren't creating the chances that we, that Mowbray wants us to be doing with this new style. Difficult to see where that new style is really coming in there. And finally, he wanted more control in the final third. Well, our th final third passing stats um, have actually gone down. We've got fewer um, passes in the final third, fewer progressive passes. It's around about the same. There's not really that much in it. And our we've we've hit fewer smart passes. Our smart passes, according to Y Scout, are passes that kind of bisect the lines or, or make it through a defensive line. So we, we're hitting fewer of the passes and. They are slightly more accurate, especially our progressive passes. But our smart passes are really low down, and those are the ones that break through the defences and allow us to get numbers um, in dangerous areas. And to illustrate some of the issues that we're facing, I've, I've cut up some clips from the matches that we'll just show you now. So now we're going to look at some positive side to our play. Um, this is against Hull. Also, this is a slowed down version of the move. You can see Daki is just uh, tricking his way past a couple of whole players in our own half, and they feeds it through to Stuart Downing. And Stuart Downing had an outstanding game against Hull away, and this is one of his key kind of passes here. Uh, we talked about how he has improved that left side for us when he's played there, and this is a key reason why he's weighted that perfectly. And if we just go back a little bit and just see where Adam Armstrong, this is a demonstration of Armstrong's pace really um, just go back to here um, he's, he has yards to get to get past their central defender but Downing has faith in him you can see that he's going through it's just this touch here um, just slightly too heavy and allows the whole keeper to get down to his feet there before and just smothers the shot just a lighter touch and he would have been in on goal there and that's the kind of um, football I guess that Mowbray is looking for when he's talking about make, creating chances in the final third and that came from a swift counter attack which is something that's, which we're quite terrible at have been quite terrible at under Mowbray so that was pleasing to see against Hull so here we're going to look at um, when we've tried to play it out the back which is obviously something that we've um, started doing this season obviously something Mowbray believes in and we just see what happens here against Hull it wasn't seen on the live coverage but we just play it out here uh, from a goal kick to Cunningham who's under pressure here and if I just pause the video here um, he's got no options really um, we've got one two three four five six seven Hull players kind of pressed into our area this has come from our goal kick um, 
Lenihan's the one who's played it out to him, and he's tried to make him, himself available, but he's not going to be able to play it in. Johnson's under pressure, so we've got the whole like whole high press going on there, and Cunningham is now unable to extricate himself from this situation. So we'll see what happens here. He gets closed down, and the ball drops into I think it's Batty, and the whole midfield, and he's got options now. Look at those two options there on the edge of the box there and there. Um, he ends up picking out Kamil Grzyski. And those of you who watch the game will know what happens. He's going to... He, it's so easy, isn't it? Just to, It's one pass and he's in our box and with practically with a free shot on goal. And thankfully, we don't concede on that occasion. But that actually happened a couple of times in that game uh, where we're starting in the back and we gave it away very cheaply and very early. Now... We haven't scored any goals from this method yet. Um, I'm not sure we've conceded either directly from it, but I think we've conceded more chances than we've managed to create from playing it out from the back so far. Um, so it'll be something that we need to monitor. And there's just the second shot going wide there. Um, something that we need to monitor all throughout the season to see if this is an effective way of playing for us. Just wanted to show you this clip from the Cardiff game, match a few chances as we've, as we've seen. Um, this was an attack that we started creating, so we just played it out to, I think it's Downing, who's taken up a central position there, playing out to the left-hand side. Um, and then he's going to make a move, if you're watching there, he's going to make a move into this half space here. He's very clever at finding the space, and he's going to be given it back now by Amari Bell. And this should give us a really good space to attack from. So there we go. The pass has come in. And he's just about to receive it. The Cardiff left back makes a decision to come out and press Downing, which should leave space out there for the person playing on the right-hand side um, to to gamble. Otherwise, we've got three um, other attackers in the, in the forward line as well, but they're quite well covered. There's not been a lot of movement. Um, as Amari Bell has, has moved forward with the ball, but Downing's got it now. Let's see what he does under pressure here. He shifts the ball to his left hand side where everyone's already covered. So Gallagher has moved from that right hand space where he was being marked by that full back, and now there's plenty of room out there for Elliot Bennett. Uh, but it's a terrible pass from Stuart Downing, and we, we've bought him to obviously play those passes. Obviously a lot better than that. But I'll tell you what, be fair to him, I'm going to take this off slow motion. There is a chance that comes from the end of this. You can see at the back post that we've got we would have had three on three there, so it could have been a really good opportunity for us, but that's where we need to be more clinical in our build up play. And that's why we've well, not created the chances. Hesitation so. in the end. Obviously Bennett's gone forward. Travis has sold himself there. Now the break is on but for Cardiff. Here comes Bennett Murphy. And has Downing, pace. if you look at the pace that he's got there. Gets Striding back, into the Blackburn penalty area. Kind of gets the cross away. It's deflected. Terrible touch there on the edge of the box. Might come here for Rawls. Who strikes Rawls. and hits the foot of the post. It's the post. So that was came from our break, the breakdown in our attack, which obviously is not ideal. So I think we'll finish off here by just having a look at what happens here against Middlesbrough. Uh, we're already 1-0 up at this stage. This is into the second half. And um, we've just had a long um, goal kick being delivered by Christian Walton. And we're going to pick up the second ball here in midfield. And it's going to be fed out to the right-hand side. And you think maybe we're going to put together another kind of passing move and, and play a lot of lateral passes, which is what happened um, in this game and, and has done quite a lot recently, playing a lot of lateral passes across the midfield and defence. So, um, in fact, Elliot Bennett turns back inside and plays it into Lenehan, who, and it's between these two so often that where our attacks begin. Uh, we've seen repeatedly on the preview shows and on other stat shows that a lot of our players come from this right-hand side of defence. And on this occasion, because we've got Danny Graham in the team, pro, um, principally, this is the reason for this tactic, Lenehan hits it up towards him. He's taken two defenders to kind of handle him. Dak knows exactly where the ball is going to be because him and Graham have had this relationship for a long time and it creates a good shooting opportunity at the edge of the box and we're unlucky not to get a second penalty of handball at the end of it. But it's a shot 
not on target, but towards the target, and it's a dangerous situation that we've managed to create from that more direct approach. And I'm not advocating that. I'm definitely more of a play the football along the ground and create um, shapes and, and all that sort of stuff. I agree with that, and I agree with what Mobe is trying to do. It's just I'm still not convinced that we've got the message across for the personnel that we've got and whether it suits the personnel that we've got. And that kind of clip was just – I just – came across that and, and decided to use it to, to illustrate the point really so there you have it that's how i look at the change of style of play under tony morbury um i suppose in conclusion there has been changes they're definitely trying to play out from the back um a little bit more but we've yet to see how effective that is going forward and i think they should stick with it and that's his principles and that's the principles of play that he wants to go with so we have to give it more time and we haven't had the easiest of fixtures, so we could do with a run maybe where we can get a rhythm going in possession and and really get a bit more movement flowing up front to see if we can create those chances and, and get a few more goals. And once we get a few goals, the confidence will flow and hopefully we'll see um, bigger scores coming for us. Thank you so much for watching this. I know it's a bit of a longer one than usual, but it was a big topic and we don't want to do it justice. So hopefully you've enjoyed the content. There's a lot of hard work gone into this one. And um, so if you don't mind giving it a big old like there on YouTube, sharing it with your mates if they're Rovers fans, or even if they're not and they're just interested in the analysis of how we're playing at the moment, then please share it. Um, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And... Tune in again for the next one. Thanks very much.